you uh, mentioned the big picture things mm. and so why do you think they're not going to be solving the problem mm. and um, that that's not sufficient? Why do you think that what us as individuals do, um, mm. eating less meat, driving less, that that's mm. going to make any mm. significant difference? Recently in South Street, there's been some really positive developments that many of you will have heard about. So there's a new um, concentrated solar thermal plant that's going to be constructed um, soon and also a large um, battery that Tesla has built um, to help stabilise the grid. So these big picture solutions to climate change are really important, but I think we miss the plot a bit if we think they happen independently of our actions as individuals. Now, Elon Musk and um, Jay Wetherill, political and business leaders, they do have an important role to play, but it's, they won't do it until we as individuals change our lives and, and pressure, put pressure on government and corporations to, to change their practices as well. We read in history books about these, these big changes that happened and think that oh, maybe the Indian independence movement was won single-handedly by Gandhi. Now, of course he played a vital role in that, but he wouldn't have achieved much without millions of ordinary Indians backing him and his movement. Similarly with World War II, um, Churchill and Roosevelt, they wouldn't have been able to win World War II without the sacrifices of millions of soldiers and civilians. So I think it's the same with climate change, which is, is a great struggle comparable to those, those um, momentous parts of history. So until we as individuals get involved by reducing our own carbon footprint and calling on politicians and business leaders to do their bit, those big picture solutions, which aren't necessary, won't happen. So Mark, how hopeful, or maybe not hopeful are you, that um, we can stay below the two degrees centigrade temperature rise? Yeah, so this, this two degrees centigrade rise is from the Paris uh, Climate Agreement. That's what we need to keep temperature rises under, or else we're facing all sorts of awful, awful problems. So am I hopeful that we can keep below two degrees? Well, sometimes I am and sometimes I'm not. You know, so sometimes uh, lovely things happen, like you, know, you hear a friend decide uh, that they've sold their, their second car and now they're driving uh, less and they're riding their bikes more. Other people say, well, you know, we've decided not to fly to Japan to go skiing, we're going to do something else instead. So sometimes I, I get, I'm hopeful because of those things, mm -hmm. but other times I'm not hopeful, to be honest. You know, so I remember one of the lowest points of this journey for me was, um, was the election of uh, President Trump in the US because it was known that he was a, a climate skeptic, it was known that he would pull the US out of the Paris Accord if he were elected. And so I remember emailing all my, my American friends saying, please do everything you can to not have this guy elected. They all wrote back and said, no worries, Mark, it won't happen. And of course, it did happen. And of course, he did go ahead and he pulled the US out of the Paris Climate Accord. So at moments like that, I, I feel pretty down, like, wow, it, it's just the, the system, the people, the selfishness uh, makes this impossible. But of course, we can't just give up and say it's not going to work. We've got to keep going and, and doing what we can. And that's really what's led to this book. Tom, I'm just interested to know how the Beyond Zero Emissions work has been helpful in this book. Beyond Zero Emissions have been really helpful. We've drawn from their work quite a bit in our book. So for those of you who don't know, Beyond Zero Emissions um, has produced a series of reports about how Australia can transition towards uh, a zero carbon economy. So they've looked at how we can produce our electricity renewably, about how we can change our transport systems, our agriculture, industrial processes. So they've produced a series of really high quality, scientifically rigorous reports showing that this transition is doable. So Beyond Zero Emissions is coming at this from a slightly different angle than we are. Um, they're, they're basically looking at those big picture solutions, the big changes that we can make at the political and economic level to, um, to transform our society. But we think, and we, we've drawn from that quite heavily, because even though we're talking primarily about the changes that you and I can make, those two things go together. They're not either or, they, they're both and. And that's because the big picture solutions, the fact that those are doable, as BZD shows, gives us hope as individuals that our little bit is not in vain, that what we do will contribute to making this difference. So if we didn't know that there was a way out of this crisis, if we didn't have confidence that there were big picture solutions that will work, then maybe we just bury our heads and um, kind of go down with a party. <laughs> but no, no, we do have confidence, partially thanks to BZD's great work, that um, big picture solutions are possible and hence that what bits we do in our own lives are worthwhile.
Tom, what is just some really practical things that um, ordinary people um, can do to begin their journey on a low carbon life? So Penny, there's lots of things that we can all do. So it's one of the silver linings of the fact that our emissions are so high at the moment is there's so many different ways that we can reduce them. So I think the, the important thing, as I was mentioning earlier, is just to take the first step. And that first step is often the courageous one because we're stepping out into the unknown. What would it be like to catch public transport to work? What would it be like to not eat meat this meal? But if we can have the courage to take that first step, we'll often find that it's not actually as hard as we were fearing. So um, yeah, I'd, I'd encourage you all to um, try, just try, experiment with reducing your carbon footprint in different areas of life. Catch the train to work, um, ride somewhere instead of driving, take a holiday um, within the country rather than overseas, um, change your diet, reduce your electricity consumption. There's so many ways that you can do it. Um, but just the, the important thing is to give something a try. And um, I think from, from my experience at least, it's not as hard as you might think it is.